I was in high school when this incident took place. I lived in a suburb where modes of entertainment were less. There was a small pub, a shopping complex, and a single-screen movie theater for the entertainment of young minds. I, on the other hand, was a loner because of my confused sexuality phase. I couldn't gather the courage to open up to my parents about being gay, hence I cut myself off from any social interaction. My parents, on the other hand, were having marital issues, so I decided to give them all the space they needed. Often at night, I used to sneak out of the house when I couldn't bear the sound of two adults screaming at each other. Their relationship made me realize life is beautiful until you get married. I was a minor, so there's no way I could go to the pub to grab a drink. The shopping mall closed after 8, hence my only recluse was the movie theater. Almost every night they put up a late night show from 12am to 2am. My distant cousin Jack worked there as a janitor. He helped me to get in and watch those movies without buying a ticket. He called the late night shows dead hours, as only a handful of people came to see them. It was a warm summer night and I was feeling disgusted with the loud fights and obscene language of my parents. I dialed Jack's number to know if a show was going on or not. He picked up my call and replied, About to start in 10 minutes. Hurry up. I sneaked out immediately. The roads were empty. The sounds of crickets and the dim street lights calmed me down. It might feel weird to you, but back then I was going through a really troubled mental state. The only solution was isolation but being too alone has its consequences too. I could see the blinking signboard of the movie theater from the end of the road. The more I walked towards it, the name of the movie started to become visible. I found out it was a horror movie. I heard about that movie from a bunch of boys in my school, so I got excited. I quickly walked inside and saw Jack standing near the red-colored ticket counter shielded with a glass cover. He smiled and told me to go in by pointing his finger inside the movie hall. The advertisements had already started. It was quite dark, but the lit movie screen helped me navigate my way through the dark. I didn't want to be bothered, so I grabbed a corner seat from the second row. Apart from me, I could see a couple making out in the front row, and two other individuals scattered in the big theater. They were probably homeless people who came to sleep under a roof. The movie started and I took out a pack of cigarettes. This movie theater was never in its best shape on weekdays, that too in such odd hours. You can just smoke or drink and no one cares. Once I saw a guy doing meth sitting in the front row. I watched the movie on the screen and he saw a movie in his mind. I was already in deep shit, so spending night after night in such an unsafe environment never got me worried. I just put my hoodie on and fired up a cigarette. There were small air vents built up in the corners near the last rows, so it made an ideal spot for me to smoke in peace. The movie started and I was hooked on it. I was watching attentively while smoking. After a point of time, I realized I have to put off the slow burning cigarette butt. I had no intention to burn this place down, so I took my eyes off the screen and started to put it out with my sneakers. Suddenly, I heard heavy breathing and I looked up to follow the sound. A man was sitting at the left side of the middle row and watching me. Because he sat in the middle, it was possible to see his face. He had a very disturbing stare as he could see through me. Not just that, but his breathing didn't feel normal to me. His bony face had no blood and there was something wrong with his right eye. It was twitching at times in a very creepy way. He smiled at me for no reason and I knew this was just another meth head. I ignored him and started watching the movie again. I thought he would pass out on his seat, so it's better to avoid him. God, I wish he passed out. A moment later, out of curiosity, I looked back at him again. But this time, I saw an even more filthy sight. The man's mouth was open and he was drooling like a dog. I can't even explain how disgusted I felt. Drops of saliva were all over his chin. I felt like I was going to puke on the floor. But as I said, I've spent night after night in this doomed place, so I got my shit together and returned to the movie. I thought that I'm not the only one inside this movie theater. Also, my cousin is outside. There's no way this man could cause harm to me. 
I took out a beer can that I stole from my dad and started sipping from it. In the next five minutes, I had the worst experience of my life that still scares me to go to a movie alone. I don't know what got inside that drooling dude, but he got up trembling like a corpse and started to change seats to get closer to me. His breathing got way more intense, like he's dying to get close to me. I was so shocked and freaked out that I forgot to move. The man slowly crawled over the seats like a zombie while stretching his arms towards me and exhaling all the air in his lungs. He was probably three rows away from me when my cell phone buzzed and I got up screaming, Get away! Get away from me! I jumped from my seat and ran towards the exit door. While crossing the front row in a hurry, I tripped over the couple who were busy on their own, and it resulted in a huge brawl. The boyfriend got up and grabbed my hoodie to teach me a lesson. I tried to explain this to him, the situation, but he was being the alpha male at that point. I knew I was going home with a black eye and maybe some bruises, but as he lifted his arm to punch me, his girlfriend screamed in terrible pain and the lights were on. We all saw the man was sitting on the floor near us and biting the girl's left leg with his rotten teeth. Jack rushed in and the two other homeless men woke up. The paramedics were called in and so the cops. It came to know that the man was neither a psycho nor a drug addict. He was suffering from the last stage of rabies. There's no doubt he lived in the streets and not in very hygienic circumstances. The paramedics found a bite mark probably caused by an infectious street dog on his right arm. The rabies patient suffers acute pain with the difficulty in swallowing that leads to a dry throat. When this man saw me taking a sip from the beer, all he wanted was to quench the horrifying thirst he was experiencing. That's why he started to come close to me, or rather, towards my beer can. The girl who got bitten was immediately vaccinated, and I hope she didn't end up like that poor homeless man. Although the paramedics took him in, it was too late for him. He passed out in some hours, and I came home with a freaking scary memory that still haunts me at night. Hey guys, I see many of you commenting on my videos that this channel deserves 1 million subscribers. But I also see the percent of people who watch my videos aren't actually subscribed to the channel. So, if you like the content, want to support my channel, and want to see this channel reach 1 million subscribers, or maybe 500,000 subscribers, then go ahead, subscribe, and hit the bell icon. It's free, and you can always change your mind later. I worked in a movie theater at the beginning of my struggling years. My job was to serve snacks. Hence, I spent most of the time behind the counter. I joined as a replacement for another girl who used to work there before me. There was another girl named Corey who worked along with me. She was sweet and jolly. We became good friends in no time. Apart from us, there were three other guys who worked as maintenance staff. There was this one guy named Sam who was a big flirt. I saw him flirting with Corey, and she too definitely had a crush on him because every time he looked at her, she blushed like a red rose. Anyways, one day I was cleaning the popcorn machine when I noticed something sparkling under it. I crouched down and picked it up from the floor. It was a silver bracelet with a small red heart attached in the middle. It obviously wasn't mine, so I thought maybe it's Corey's. When she arrived for work, I showed her the bracelet. Hey, you must have dropped this last night. I found it under the popcorn machine. That's not mine. Oh, I see. It was Jillian's bracelet. Um, who's Jillian? The girl who used to work here before you. Everyone called her Jill. Oh, why did she leave the job? She didn't leave the job. Then... She just stopped coming all of a sudden. No one knows where she is now. That's strange. Did anyone look for her? Come on, Riley, she's not lost. She once told me your family stayed in Utah. She might have just returned home, that's all. I guess I'll throw it in the bin then. Yeah, whatever. We got back to our work, but I couldn't stop thinking about this girl Jill. Why did she stop coming all of a sudden? Even though I thought about throwing it, I ended up keeping the bracelet with me. 
After the end of the shift, Sam came asking for Corey. She was out to pick up some supplies, so I was watching the counter for her. Did she tell you how long it would take? No, but she'll be here soon. You can wait here. Well, I'd love to do that anyways. So what's your deal? Sorry? What do you mean? You know, you're like the shy girl and also too pretty to make the first move. Can you believe this guy? It hasn't been five minutes since we met and he already started flirting with me as well. His cheesy pickup lines made me feel... Ugh, but it's hard to be rude to someone who's praising you. I smiled and said, Thanks, but I'm not like that. Seems like we need to spend more time together to know each other well, huh? Sam! What are you guys talking about? Uh, nothing. Riley told me to wait for you here. That's all. Huh. I see. Corey gave me a fake smile, but I could tell she heard Sam flirting with me, and she didn't like that. I didn't want to give any wrong signals because I wasn't interested in her guy at all. I said in a calm voice, I'm gonna go home. You two have fun now. And left immediately. I turned back to see their reaction, <laughs> and I saw Corey getting all mushy again with Sam. What does she see in this jerk? After coming home, I went to the basement to wash my clothes. I was about to put my pants in the washing machine when I noticed Jillian's bracelet hanging from the pocket. I almost forgot about it. That entire night, I kept staring at the bracelet and thinking about Jill's mysterious disappearance. Due to lack of sleep, I woke up late and reached work late as well. I saw a rush on the counter and Corey managing everything single-handedly. I felt really ashamed of my irresponsibility and joined her immediately. Sorry, Corey. I woke up late and it's okay. Remember, we're friends. Relax, Riley. She was a sweetheart and it wasn't just one time she covered for me. Whenever I took leave, she happily did all the extra work and I couldn't thank her more. One day I went to throw wastages in the dumpster. It was at the back of the movie theater. I was emptying the waste when I heard footsteps behind me. I turned around and saw Fred coming towards the dumpster with his mop. Fred swept the floors of the movie theater. He hardly talked to anyone. Our eyes met and I smiled out of courtesy. He smiled back and started cleaning the back area. Fred has been working here for a long time. Suddenly, an idea came to my mind. I walked up to him and asked, Hey, do you mind if I ask you something? Go ahead. Um, you knew Jill, right? Who? Jillian, the girl who used to work. Fred looked at me with surprised eyes and said, Do you know where she is? I wasn't expecting this question at all, so I kept staring at him with an even more confused face. No, didn't she return home? Hmm, maybe. Why are you asking about Jillian? Do you know her? No, not exactly. I just found her bracelet the other day. I showed Fred the bracelet, and his eyes lit up in anger. That son of a bitch played with her feelings. What? Who? Sam. He's the main reason Jill left her job. Saying this, Fred bolted out from there, and I stood there in shock. So, Sam flirted with her too. This guy is desperate. Did he hurt her? So many questions were going in mind, and I had no answers. I decided to confront him and get the actual truth. I walked to the counter and saw Corey standing there laughing with Sam. As soon as he noticed me, his eyes shifted at me, and a mysterious smile appeared on his face. Hello, beautiful. Sam, I need to talk to you. Sure, I'm free for you anytime. Corey's face turned sad. I could tell she got really upset as Sam gave me all his attention suddenly. She didn't say anything, just walked away quietly. Sam doesn't bother about this at all and kept smiling at me. I uttered to myself, Girls are like toys to you, huh? I'll teach you a lesson this time. Hey, what is it that you wanted to talk about? Not here. Can we meet somewhere else? Sure. We can meet at my place tonight, around 9 o'clock. Okay, text me your address. I'll be there. Sam left with a big smile on his face. I was about to head home when Corey came to me and said, I didn't know you had a crush on Sam. 
It's not what you're thinking, Corey. Well, if you want, I would definitely move out of your way. No, you're thinking it wrong. I told Corey everything I heard from Fred. She became shocked as well. She told me she had no idea Sam is that kind of guy, but I knew he was the evil one. After dinner, I went to Sam's house. I was ready to dial 911 if I saw one wrong move. I knocked on the door and waited. A minute went by, but no one answered. I pushed the door slightly, and it slid open. The house was in complete darkness. Sam? Sam, where are... I woke up with a throbbing pain at the back of my head. As I opened my eyes, I witnessed a shocking scene. Sam was tied to a chair. He was bleeding from his nose. What? What's happening here? Sam? Who did this to you? All of a sudden, I heard a humming tune, and Corey came out in front of me. Corey? What are you doing here? There are so many men in this world. Why do you women keep chasing mine then? What? I I'm not... Poor Jillian. I told her to stay away from Sam, but she didn't listen to me. Why would she anyway? She was getting all those expensive gifts and his attention. Corey's face was furious, and her left eye kept twitching in a freaky way. All this time, it was her. She's the one behind Jill's disappearance. I couldn't believe it. She walked towards Sam and slapped him hard, saying, And you selfish men, one woman will never be enough for you, huh? Fine. I will go to any extent to make you mine. I've finished Jill, and now... It'll be Riley. She then took out a spanner and started to walk towards me. I'll beat you to death. I thought we will be good friends, but you too wanted to take what's mine. I knew she is a psychopath, and no matter what I say, she won't stop. People like her believe what they want to believe, but I wasn't ready to die at the hand of a freaking obsessed psycho. She lifted her hand to stomp me on the head, and I kicked her on the leg. She fell on her face, breaking her nose. The sound of her nose breaking still echoes in my ears. She lied on the floor in terrible pain. Sam and I somehow freed ourselves and called the cops. Cops arrested Corey for the charges of attempted murder and the murder of Jillian. Jillian's body was found in her basement. She had multiple stab wounds with slut engraved in her forehead with a sharp knife-like object. I never thought Corey could be so cruel and ruthless, and that's what scared me the most. We will never know from a person's face what devilish deed is lurking inside their mind. I want to warn everyone at the very beginning that you are not going to like this story because it can make you nauseous, so back off now before it's too late for you. Those who are still willing to watch, I have a small piece of advice for you. Always rely on your basic instincts. This is the only thing that can save you from trouble. Now, let's get to the story. I was 16 years old when my father died of a heart attack. I lost my mom at a young age, and I was the only child with no other relatives than my grandma. She raised me and somehow, I finished high school and inherited my dad's farming business. I could have left for the big city, but the memories of my childhood and parents made it difficult to go away. Also, my grandma died when I became 18 and I've been my guardian ever since. Losing so many close ones and inheriting big responsibilities were too much for my young shoulders. My father's business was enough for me to have a sustainable lifestyle, so I didn't look for any other option of earning. Even though the work pressure was a lot, I liked being my own boss at the end of the day. My entire week went by working on the farm. It was the weekends that I looked up to. Every Saturday night, I went to the local bar to drink as much as I wanted. One weekend, I was sitting at the bar chugging a mug of cold beer when someone spoke from a close distance. Hi, I'm Nina. Do you mind if I join you? I saw an average height girl standing near me. 
She had red curly hair that made her look enchanting and wicked at the same time. Her eyeballs were excessively blue, making it difficult to maintain eye contact for long. Um, sure. My girlfriend ditched me for a rich guy and moved out with him after high school. Since then, I haven't been with anyone, so I thought I might get lucky tonight. I won't deny I wanted to find someone too. We started drinking together and had some casual conversation when she suddenly got up and came right at my face. I got a bit startled at first, but then she whispered into my ears, I have some good stuff. Wanna smoke up? I have smoked occasionally with my friends, but at that moment I thought why not? Anyways, I have no rush to go home. But I don't think this is the right place. Just don't want to get in trouble. Relax, I know a good spot. Let's go. We came out of the bar and sat on my motorcycle. The girl sat behind me. She kept giving me directions. After 10 minutes, we got onto a dusty road amidst the deep woods. I took a left turn and she pointed out to a building behind the bushes. I saw it was an old, abandoned movie theater. The theater was so old that I could see worn out posters of whatever happened to baby Jane stuck on its bulletin board. Whoa, this place is older than my dead grandma. I come here often when I want to be alone. This used to be a famous movie theater, but a terrible fire broke out, and everyone died inside while watching the movie. The idea of getting high inside a burnt-out movie theater didn't appear thrilling to me anymore, especially when Nina told me people died in there, but I couldn't leave her and return home. Come on, let's go. She started to walk inside and I reluctantly followed her. I turned on the flashlight on my phone, but Nina casually walked in the dark, as if she was in her own house. Walking down the halls of the theater gave me chills. Broken glasses and dirty rags were scattered here and there. The old ticket counter was covered in thick layers of dust, changing its color forever. There were framed posters of some of the oldest movies still on the walls. Some were still readable. Nina stopped in front of the door and looked back at me. A weird smile appeared on her face. She said, This is my favorite room here. Come on. Favorite room? How could this place be someone's favorite? Nina's behavior started to creep me out. She pushed the door and we entered inside the huge movie hall. Burnt, broken chairs were all over the floor. The big white screen that once showed God knows how many films stood there like a dirty old rag. Can you imagine how many people have been here? Yeah, and also died here. We sat down on two chairs, which were moderately in better condition than the others. Nina lit up you know what, and we started to smoke. I was already drunk, and after smoking, I got really high. But Nina seemed completely fine. I wanted to kiss her, but it would have been too rude if I did it without her permission. So I waited for her to make a move. The more I waited, the more my vision started to blur. Having fun? Oh... This is some strong shit. Aren't you feeling something? <laughs> Nina's face started to become diluted in a very freaky way. I knew I am too high, and this is all my imagination. But suddenly, she stood up and started looking around like someone else has entered this place. What is it? Is someone here, Nina? She started to panic and tremble in fear. I had no idea what was happening, so I just sat there like a stone and watched her crazy behavior. She jumped from her seat and sat on the floor holding her hands in a posture of praying and screamed, Look, I've brought him to you. Now please, please give me the powers. What? What the hell is this? Please accept my offering. She didn't even acknowledge me and kept praying to whoever invisible lord she was praying to. I got up and realized that I must get out of this place. This woman is crazy. She is not what I thought her to be. I started to walk away when Nina grabbed my t-shirt from behind and said, Where do you think you're going? They're all coming to get you. I've spent years in awakening them, and now they want their offering. Soon their powers will be all mine. <laughs> 
As soon as she said that, I heard terrifying screams rising from every nook and corner of the movie theater. It was as if hundreds of people screaming in excruciating pain and pleading for help. Their screams numbed my ears, and Nina started to laugh like a maniac. A smell of burning flesh made the air heavy and started to choke me. All I wanted was to get the hell out of there and never come back. But something unexpected happened. Nina suddenly stopped laughing, and I saw her face changing color like she was scared. Why aren't you taking him? I brought him for you. What is... But before she could finish the sentence, her body caught fire. She literally started to burn in fire that some invisible force lit on her. She screamed in pain, and all those voices around started to laugh in devilish joy. While burning in flame, Nina started to walk towards me stretching her fiery arms. Flesh was melting and dropping on the floor from her body. I ran from my life without looking back once. As I came out, I kept hearing Nina scream and that demonic laughter, but I didn't stay to watch anymore. That night, I drove my motorcycle at the highest speed possible. I didn't go out for a month. After a week of this incident, cops discovered a girl's burnt body from the movie theater. She's currently listed under Jane Doe because there's no way anyone can recognize her. The case is still going on, and call me mean, selfish, or whatever you like, but I'm not going to the cops to tell what happened that night, because there's no way they would believe me.